In the previous video, which I'll link to in the description, we looked at how you can take a language model and convert it into something that looks more like an assistant. So a plain language model would just predict one word after the other. So you could give it maybe the snippet of a start of a Shakespeare play and ask it to generate its own play by just predicting one word after the other. But sometimes we want a model can, that can actually take a question and produce an answer to that question in kind of a, a sensible way. It will still do that by predicting one word after the other, but we want to do it in a specific kind of format that looks like the way that a human would answer a question. And we looked at different approaches to do this. And the one thing that we ended up on was basically using reinforcement learning. So we would take a language model, give it a prompt, and then it would produce some output. And then we would ask humans, how good is this output? Do you think this is a good response? And then based on the human response, the human rating of that output, we would start to update the model. And that's the basic principle behind a reinforcement learning where you basically update the model by starting to do things. The one problem with doing that naively where we generate an answer um, give it to humans to rate and then try and update it, that again and again is that it's extremely slow to wait for humans to click. And that's where um, reinforcement learning through human feedback um, comes in, where we're going to train a little model that basically predicts how a human would have ranked this particular output given the, the input that the model received. And I just wanted to unpack that a little bit more. So here's the aim of the game. So we want to change this model to look more like an assistant. What we're going to do in order to get there is we're going to feed this model with a prompt. Okay. And then we're going to have this model produce some output. Okay. Some action. Okay. Which in this case is uh, an output, which is an answer to that prompt. And then we're going to say, well, given this prompt, this question, how good of an answer is the action that the agent took. And then the environment, which is humans, is going to say, listen, this is a really good response to this question. Okay, cool, you get rewarded. Or this is a really horrible response to this question, you get penalized, okay? And then we want the agent language model, we'll call it the parameters of that model, pi. We want that to change in order for um, high rewards to get obtained um, and low low rewards to not be obtained. And the environment actually also has access to the prom well, prompt, right? When we say this is a good response, we know what the prompt is. The one big question is where does this reward function come from? And the answer is we're going to learn a reward model by asking a bunch of humans to rate previous answers to a previous bunch of questions. And then we're going to learn a little reward model, R, that tells us how good uh, a given response is to a given question. And that's what we're then going to do use in order to update the parameters of our agent language model. So I'm going to do this a little bit form formally. So we have a reward model, which I'll just denote as H. It has parameters phi. Okay, and the reward model takes in a prompt and it takes in a potential answer to that prompt and it outputs a real number something between minus infinity and infinity and we want what we want from the reward model is we're going to train it so that if this is a good answer to this prompt then it outputs a very high number infinity if this is a very bad answer to this prompt then it outputs a very negative number, basically minus infinity. So what we do is we collect a little data set where we have some prompts and we have some candidate answers. We've looked at this before. So you have a prompt like write a haiku about paper clips, and then you have some candidate answers. These can either come from um, just running your language model as it is at the moment, maybe after fine tuning on some human expert examples, or you can actually just get humans to write some candidate answers. The point is that we want a model that takes some general question, some general answer, and says how good of an answer is this to that question. Okay, so we've got a, a little data set here, and let's just for the moment say we've got three candidate answers. So 
capital P as the number of candidate answers that we can get. Okay, so we've got a Y1, a Y2, and a Y3. Okay, each one of them will have a different length, so M in each case will be different, but I'm a bit lazy, so I'm not going to denote it all the time. Then we also have a selection, so um, we collect the, the disk data set by asking humans for this prompt and these three candidate answers, which one do you like best? Okay, and we'll just denote that as little b. And little b can then be, it's an integer value, which is like one, two, tink, 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 up to capital B. Okay, so if, if number three is selected, then little b is equal to three. If number one is selected, then little b is equal to one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to train our reward model using a little softmax classifier. Okay, and that will become clear in a second, which basically tells us how likely a human is to pick um, one of the candidate answers given the prompt. Really what we're modeling is we're modeling the probability of little b being a particular value given the prompt and the candidate answers. So formally how we can write that out is we're modeling a probability. The probability depends on the parameters phi, which is the reward model parameters. And then we're modeling the probability of b being selected given a ton of stuff given the prompt and given the set of candidate answers. Okay, and there's B, um, capital B candidate answers. And we're modeling that using a little softmax function. And I'll unpack this in a second, but we basically take the exponential of our reward model for the prompt and that little b is selected so that the little b th candidate answer is selected. Okay, and then we normalize that so that we actually get a proper probability. So little j from one to capital B, E, H, dunk, X, uh, one to T, and then Y, now we've got Y little j. Okay, okay, so what the fudge is going on here? How you can think about this is it's, it's maybe I'm going to go into too much detail now, but um, whatever. So we actually have a little model that takes in uh, a prompt and a potential answer, like the first answer. And this little model sits here. That model is called H. It takes X and it takes Y and it produces a number for how good uh, answer that is. But we take the same model, H phi, and the same model, and we feed um, we feed it with the same prompt as well. So that prompt goes in there and that prompt goes in there. But then here we feed it with the second candidate answer and here we feed it with the third candidate answer. This produces a score and this produces a score. So we end up with a little vector here, let's make it green, with three numbers in it. Dunk, dunk, dunk. And these are now treated as the low jets to a softmax classifier. So this goes into a little softmax block and that produces uh, another vector, in this case with three elements. I mean, you can have five um, candidate answers as well. That's also fine, right? These three are all between zero and one and they sum to one. And it basically tells you whether it's the probability of selecting the second candidate given this prompt or the third candidate given this prompt. Okay, and what we do is we train this model, we train the parameters of this model, the phi's inside, um, inside your reward model. We train that with a little loss function that says, listen, the actual thing that happened in this case with this specific training example was that the third answer was selected. So that's a zero and that's a zero and you need to make the probability here. You need to make that high and we use a negative log likelihood. And then what we do in the end is we use the low jets because that's really the output of our reward model. This is the, the H's and we use that as our reward model. Okay, because these values are between minus infinity and infinity. If it's at infinity, if it's very, very big, then it's probably going to have a one there. If it's very, 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 very large negative values, then it's probably going to be zero. You're, you're going to train this model on a ton of different examples. Each example will consider, consist of a prompt, a set of candidate answers, and then the selection that was actually made.
And if you have those things and you've got, you know, several thousands, maybe um, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of prompt candidate answers and selections, then you can train this thing with negative log likelihood. Awesome. We collected the, these um, training samples. We train our model. The model can look differently, like this actually probably looks like a language model already. Okay, but I haven't actually told you about the structure of that at all. It's probably a transformer model. Okay, but we've trained that model and that model is fixed now and it tells us how good is a potential answer to a potential prompt. And now we get back to reinforcement learning land and now we're going to use that model as our reward function. So let me just make this a little bit concrete. We've trained our little reward model um, on some data. Now we're going to start with the reinforcement learning part of this. The first thing is we're going to start by initializing our model to the model that we've had before. Okay, so we've already got a GPT model or maybe even a language model that's been updated on human expert examples and we initialize our agent to that model. So our agent language model, the thing that we're going to change now, it just starts out exactly um, with the base model that we're starting from. And then we're going to do reinforcement learning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit lazy and not actually tell you at all about the exact algorithm that's used, but it's called proximal policy optimization. I'll put some links in the video description to very nice videos which actually unpacks exactly how the gradients are approximated using PPO um, because you actually need to you know, change the parameters of your pie in order to get your model. How does that happen? Okay, but what I will say is I'll, I mean, I'll tell you what the reward function is. So the reward function isn't just H. We're going to actually add a little term there. So the reward function is going to be, so we've got for a prompt and a given answer. The reward function is going to be um, the thing we've learned from the human examples. But then we're going to add a little term minus beta a weighted term of the log of the ratio between two probabilities. The one is the probability of the response according to your agent language model given the prompt divided by the probability from the original language model, the, initialize, the initialization model. So what this penalty term does is it basically says the, this probability here at the top um, from the language model for this um, produced output, it shouldn't be um, massively more than the probability that's assigned by the initialization language model. Basically what's happening here is this penalty term says don't drift too far off from the model that um, we initialized you with. And that's just so that the model actually doesn't become um, too crazy. Okay, and this is the actual reward function that's used in the little um, or our pipeline here. So in one cycle of this little reinforcement learning algorithm, um, you have a prompt, your agent responds to that prompt, basically tries to answer that question, and this is the answer to the question. And then we score that um, answer according to the reward model, which has already been trained before. Okay, and then based on that score, the the agent's internals, the parameters of the agents, the pi, the language model, the assistant language model will get updated and changed to actually produce even better answers. And that's really the third and final step for going from a language model like GPT to an assistant language model like ChatGPT. You start with by pre-training a model, that's just normal language modeling, predicting the next word. Then you fine tune that on expert examples that's still just a language modeling task. You've just swapped out your data to um, have expert questions with expert answers. And then the third step, which is RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, where you basically want to get a model that produces outputs that humans will rank as really good outputs. And that's how you get to ChatGPT.